All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Olumide Olufuovi. And, um, well, it's a testimony, I would say. Uh, what I really do I start from? Maybe my heart is beating pretty fast. I'm not shy, but I don't know. It's quite an emotional one. So I'd, uh, I'm not holding my energy, so I'll try not to cry. <laughs> All right. So um, I attended Joy 1.0, and um, it was a great one for me because I, I thought November, December of last year was really a roller coaster because um, my mom turned to a Jackie Chan and got in the plane and had to go check my dad because she felt something was wrong. And we got there, realized he was ill and he wasn't going to tell anyone. And while she was there, my brother-in-law came back and um, were in and out of the hospital as well. So I had, to, I had to be the man of the house and all of that. And um, I think, okay, my dad got better. We had a surgery. He was fine. That was tick. So it was my brother-in-law. And um, for a while, I've been ill at some point, and uh, maybe I thought it was cancer. So I bought a book about cancer, and uh, I was reading the book, and I had a, I had a test done, and all of that, so I was fine. So I didn't have cancer. Okay, fine. Okay, so that passed. That passed, and I, I felt, okay, fine. Cancer is far from us. We just read it in the books and um, see it on the days. And um, the result from my brother in those test came out, and it made like a spleen. I knew what it was. And I was afraid. Yeah, I was afraid because I just did not want, I felt cancer is off of it and all of that. But uh, it didn't work like the plan because, um, okay, we started meds and everything. We all went back to normal lives and all of that and all of that. But um, towards May, June, the whole thing started. And this time around, it felt more like, okay, Olumide. Um, okay, I came up with a quote saying that God will deal with you with what you fear the most. And I think that was what I feared the most because I couldn't imagine my sister being a widow at that pretty young age. So we tried all we could. We prayed. I sowed seed of mercy. Seeds have worked for me. So it's not a function of it didn't work. It was just a function of what God wanted to happen. And I learned so much about um, these days. I don't seem to even understand English anymore. So when I'm singing songs to God, I always like to check the meaning of the dictionary. So as a last night, I was singing, and I, and I read Everlasting Love. I was singing, and I heard Everlasting so I had to go check it. And it was like, love forever. And the truth about the whole thing is, while we were worshiping this morning, I was led to Job chapter 1 and 2. And I remember um, that, that um, convo between um, God and the devil about Job, about God placing an edge around him and all of that and all of that. And he says, you know what, that this guy really has come to me and the devil tried to torment him with that sickness in his body. And it felt more like the devil wanted to win the battle. But I've called his soul to myself, and he has won the victory. And in the, in the entirety of this old drama and all of it, I've had my cry. And today was my, well, I say my midwife. I, I totally put off my, I totally, literally, I pulled off my scalp and I was crying. I cried. I'd never cried that way in my entire life. Because I knew the days were approaching. I, as a, when I was praying, I was led to Psalm 140, 144 there about talking about the death of the saints is precious in the eyes of the Lord. And I prayed it away. I said, God, it cannot be happening. No, this can't happen. No, my brother in law, no. Uncle Donnie has to be with us. He has to be now. He has to take care of Okwe. He has to take care of Fikayo and all of that. But when it finally happened, it was like, it gave specifics to me two weeks' time. And as I, when we got to the hospital, the doctor said, okay, you guys should go and prepare for the last battle. And all. my sister was just in denial. I don't understand what he's talking about. But as at Sunday, as at Saturday, I think it was Saturday, I, I saw you and I was crying. I cried. And as at Sunday morning, it was Father's Day, apparently. And we're supposed to be in church. I had to go to church. I'd, I'd mutually changed church. I had moved in with my sister. And this is me who was, at some point in my life, I was... I was really running around the also world. I was really hustling for money. So my time was important. Christmas, I didn't spend with my family because I felt I needed to meet some other people and strike some deals. But over time, when I had cancer, I realized that all that matters would be family. All that matters would be love and what you can do for people while you can and while they're alive. So as a Sunday morning, it was Father's Day. I totally forgotten. I, when, you, when, you, when you have to... When you have to change tones, going to check somebody in the hospital, you just forget, you forget time, track of time and date. 
So I got into church. I was carrying my niece. My nephew was right next to me. There was a red carpet. I was wondering, is there a party or something? And the lady just screamed, happy Father's Day. I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm the uncle. I'm not the dad. They're like, no, it doesn't matter. Go snap a picture. And at that point, when I stood there, I think I just didn't have, I started to have teary eyes again. I'm like, okay, fine, God, please just let this call pass over. I was like, let this guy come back, come and do this for his kids. But I didn't know that was the last day, really. So we're in church, and my sister was crying. And it's just really, I was very emotional. If it was, I don't know, I think I'm learning to cry now everywhere. I'm learning to cry anywhere and everywhere. I don't care. I just clean the face. I don't care. You know, so it was not really my church. So I was trying to be the all get together, put together guy. So I was really holding it. But my sister was all along. And she, she, I was on a gray. She was on a black dress. And she said, when she wore that dress that morning, she heard in her spirit, today is the day. And she said, God forbid. And I laughed. Because when God told me two weeks, I didn't tell her anything. So when she prays with me, I stopped fasting. I stopped giving seeds. And I was just giving thanks. And... Um, when we got back home, we were trying to eat and all of that. So somebody called from the hospital saying we had to, we had to come over. And all through the night, we were in and out trying to get blood and blah, blah, blah. And when they said we had to come over, I just had to stay at home with the kids. And she went to my mom. And uh, as I took, my mom called and said, okay, ask your brother to leave the house. He has to get back to school. I'm like, okay, fine, no problem. Then as at 6, they went back. As at 7, 30, they went back. And I get a call from my pastor's wife saying that I need a house address. And at that point, I began to sing, and my sister, my, I was in my immediate elder sister, and she had totally lost it. She had totally lost it, and she was like, no, God cannot do this. And all along, I attended Joy, I attended Joy 1.0, then I started taking a course um, at um, Life Point Church, um, experiencing God. And my sister was making just of me that, see you, you that are born in deeper life, you are taking a course in experiencing God. What else do you need to know about God? But I think that it was just a preparation. There was that part in the Bible that talks about, um, seeds falling on fertile ground, falling within rocks and all of that. Because the truth is, when we hear things like this, there will be trials. There will be trials. And when the trials come is when we actually now would know if all of those things really do abide in us. And the all, in the whole of the journey, in the entirety of it, okay, fine, it passed that we had issues with in-laws, back and forth. We had so many other things. Then she had to resume work. She had to resume work. And you know how it is with the tradition. I, have, I didn't grow up, I'm a Yoruba person. My father is a Yoruba man. But I didn't grow up coming close with tradition. But we had to, to do that. Uh, you don't walk people. You don't, uh, you don't smile. You don't cry when the kids are around. And it was, it, was, it was not so much of a perfect timing for us. But during that period, okay, she had to resume work. And there was a whole lot of pressure what she was supposed to wear and what not. She had to do this very funny all back and wear black for like say, two weeks. The first week she did. The second week they called her and they were like, see, madam, we understand the fact that you are young and all of that. We require that you do not wear black to this office anymore. And she was like, okay, I don't understand. I said, yeah, we understand tradition and all that, but you really need to get your, back, your life back together. And they made the narrative about, was it Juno or something? They were like, he was going to kill himself and all of that and all of that. But in, in, in the real sense of it, I have, I have, okay, fine, some people got to know about what I'd been through in December because I told myself I was going to call it uh, in, the, in the midst of grief, January, sorry, December to June, then thereafter. So I, 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 I got talking to certain people and somebody said, I don't know how you did it, but you never wore it on your face. And I'm like, maybe I just, I totally learned to get from God in the place of prayer. And I think that's what has helped me through this. Thank you so much.